Hi, welcome to section 2, Data Analysis Using Pandas. In this section, we're going to go over a slightly bigger example of crime in Chicago. Topics we'll covering uh, will include first parsing the data set, and then we're going to go over the contents of this data set by at the same time showing pandas data structures. Next, we're going to explore and visualize the data to show some of the neat graphics we can get out of a rich data set such as the Chicago Crime data set. And finally, we're going to show you how you can add interactivity to your notebook uh, cells. So let's get to it. Parsing the Crime data set. The Chicago Crime data set is published by the Chicago Data Portal you can download it from this URL or of course, of course uh, copy it from the, from the company in GitHub repository. It includes all sorts of stuff in it. It includes the time of occurrence of each crime. Uh, the crimes are sorted by type. For example, if it's a theft, murder, some other act of crime. And what's going to be very important in the next section, it also includes the location of the crime. So the latitude and log longitude. Without further ado, let's jump into a notebook and see how to parse it. So, this is the Jupyter Notebook running from the Docker container again. I've gone ahead and copied the Chicago Crime folder into my work data path. And I've created a notebook in there already, the Chicago Crime uh, notebook filling out some of the things, the boring commands, so I don't have to type them in, and you watch me typing. So let's look at uh, the source first, uh, just to show you kind of what's, what's in there. So this is the website of the Chicago Data Portal. There's an export button in there that I've used to actually download the CSV, and the data includes a huge amount of crime occurrences from 2001 to, to the present day. So it's quite likely if you're watching this course at a later date that yours might include even more data. And these are the types included. So we have theft, battery, criminal damage, narcotics, uh, and other types of offenses. So it's a pretty, pretty big classification here. And they also include some visualizations in here that we might create something similar later in the course. This is the URL or you can also just open it from the notebook link here. So let's get started. We have the usual uh, import of the pandas and numpy libraries. And let's see what's inside. So in the data Chicago crime folder, as I said, I copied the CSV file. You can download it directly from the website as well. And let's, let's kind of see what's inside the CSV. So I've in this, Python variable, I've created the path to the CSV, and I'm going to print it out here uh, using some Unix commands or Linux commands. I'm actually going to first print the pr first line by limiting the lines printed to one because there are lots of columns, as you'll see. Then added a new line and then added a second line by actually printing the first two and then by adding an additional pipe and tail command. So that's a Linux thing if, if you're not familiar with uh, chaining commands, which will just limit of the two first commands to the last one line. So let's print this out. Excellent. So here in the first line, we see the kind of the header of our data set. So ID, case number, date, which is important. And the uh, primary type is a pretty important column for us. And here we can see what the raw data looks like. So we can see that uh, a date is formatted in a month, day, year format. There's a timestamp in there as well. And uh, in the AM, PM format. And here we can see all caps, uh, the type of, type of crime. Okay, one other thing you might have noticed I've actually defined a Python variable here and used it in a Unix command as if it's an environment variable. This is a great trick that I found useful. So you can actually access Python variables inside your bash commands. 
since this is a really really big data set so it's 1.5 gigs i'm gonna create a smaller path here in in the same folder in the data folder uh calling it crime 2001 to present small .csv. uh just to just to have quicker actions here if i want them so that's useful when you're iterating on the read csv function because uh, if it's a huge file it's, if every execution takes i don't know a few minutes then it's slower to detect a mistake so this is a nice trick i found to speed it up so basically by doing the head i've i've included only the first 10 lines in the small file so let's uh go over our read csv command you've already seen this in the previous section when we've been parsing the life expectancy data set so hopefully it looks familiar already so first we pass the path of the file to parse one thing that's new uh, is specifying the the columns which include dates so i've told it that in the second column indexing from zero so actually in the third column date uh, we are going to have a date and tell pandas to try and parse it and i've also told it to use that same column so the date column as an index so let's see what this looks like wow it actually parsed everything you can see here that pandas actually uh formatted the date uh, and parsed it and you know that from the fact that initially it was written in this uh, let's say american style with pm and month first then day and you can see that pandas formatted in this uh, more standard like format where it goes year month day and then the timestamp in a 24 hour format so that's great we don't have to do any special logic for parsing dates and we have here the primary type this is excellent we can do the same thing for a slightly larger file now which uh i'm gonna keep to this size so the first the million and one lines of the file to have slightly more interactive workflow uh, at home you can also try parsing the whole data set but i think this is going to be easier for the course so i'm going to call this file path medium and uh, i'm going to call the same command to parse this one right and it's done you might have noticed that this operation takes a bit longer to execute in your machine but i can speed up time and make it happen in a snap so we can see here that the medium data set was also parsed the same as the other one the indices in the end now finish at around 2004 they are not all sorted in time and we can see actually what's uh what's included in the time series it goes from 2015 down to the 2004 jumping back and forth now and then so it's it's not sorted as i said you can use this useful command so crimes.memory usage which shows the memory usage of each data frame column uh, sum this up and since it shows the result in bytes uh, you divide it to get the value in megabytes and we can see that the whole uh, data frame is using around 150 megs in memory i'm also using the python 3 app strings here uh, to be able to inline commands inside a string which is a nice shortcut i think so finally let's do an operation on this data set to have something to plot we'll go into the details of the actual data structure the data frame in the next video so let's look at the daily crime numbers uh, so we first select the column primary type and since it's a time series we have a method called resample by day denoted by d which basically groups all the all the intervals by uh by day here and counts them we will then sort the index and uh select the year 2016 
So let's see the results. This plot here shows the number of crimes happening each day in 2016. I think that's a nice visualization to close this video off uh, since it shows we've successfully parsed the data set.